I got a story for you. Okay. All right. Last year, I uh, got asked to uh, host at the Looney Bin Comedy Club in Little Rock. Little Rock. It is the first club that has ever found my tape or someone they they heard about me from the other club and asked me to come host. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I was just like, this is great. Yeah. Yeah. So I booked it. And uh, then I realized I double booked myself and I had to call them back and say, I'm sorry, I can't do it. So the first club that ever booked yes, you. It's, a, it's so professional. You double booked yourself. Uh-huh. What yeah. else did you have booked? Uh, I had another um, I had another thing that I had already said I would do. Yeah. Like, like another, another gig I that, I, that I had said I would do and it paid a lot more. Gotcha. Yeah, but I, I thought you well, just had planned to go to a movie. I was just like, I was going to go see the new Marvel movie. And I had a brunch yeah, planned. No, no it was it's coming out that yeah. night. So they said, it's okay. We'll book you again. Mm. And then crickets for yeah. a year. Sure. I was like, shoot. So anyway, so a couple months ago, I saw that someone, not the club, but someone was putting on a show at that club. And it was a contest, mm. which I hate comedy contests because they're so... They're just based on winning on the, the winner is just based on how many of their friends are in the audience. Mm. But I thought, Hey, if I do this, I can perform in front of that booker. And if I do well, maybe he'll book me again. Yeah. Yeah. So I go out there and immediately I realize that this is a bad idea. <laughs> it is an Apollo style comedy show right which if you ever saw apollo not at the apollo but back in the day it was a comic would come out on stage and if they're not doing very well they they start to get booed yeah, and yeah. they get pulled off stage by like a clown okay. this, not apollo creed it's different yeah, not okay. different than rocky not different than rocky Creed. okay so what theirs is called which by the way is just terrifying like, oh my god just like feeling like you're going it's already terrifying to get on stage yeah yeah but, like to put yourself out there but then to know like part of the whole shtick is that they if want we don't to. yeah yeah right exactly like it's they more fun to say what to, they like, think actually there's no like, politeness involved yeah yeah there's the, all politeness is removed all <laughs> dignity and respect is yeah they want stripped away yeah stinks yeah. So so the, you you walk in and that's when you realize that. I mean, this is the closest yourself, thing yeah. to social media you have in real life. Yeah, that's exactly. True. That is yeah. true. That's exactly what it is. And you paid to be there. <laughs> I did. You're so it's for a it. double double edged sword. Yeah. It's yes. <laughs> Tell me you hate me. Yeah. To my face. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Little Rock's not close. Yeah. It's right. Four hours from Tulsa. Oh, you drove four hours. Yeah. Yeah. And paid money. And paid money to be there. And just the gas. And I'm away from my family. Oh and my gosh, yeah. Why? Just to get into this <laughs> little club. Yeah. Um so uh it's called Night Owl. Okay. And it uh, you get on stage and you if they don't like you, they shine a light from their phone. With their phone, okay. And then they and then they shake their keys. Why the light? I don't it, understand. I don't know. That. Just little like steps. A, an intimidation, like I don't know. Just maybe, tactic. maybe it's just not phase a, one. You know, it's just, phase one. Yeah, it's phase one. Just okay. to get your pulse pounding a little harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But hold it, on, I thought you said this was at the what was the club you first got booked into, but then you had to cancel. The, it's at the same club. It's at the same club, but oh. it's a different thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's a different event when you at said that it was same club. Called the. Oh, I'm sorry. They the night. The night. They were okay. calling the night. I, it, this, that's not important. What's important is the way they do it. Here's how they did it. Th yeah. Their way. They do a light first. You get on stage. They do a light. If they don't uh, like if you. If they don't like you, they're shining a light. So you got all these phones shining a light. Stupid. Then they shake their keys. And then they just start hooting like an owl. Oh my god. Yeah. That's the progression. That's of, the progression of hatred. Of hatred. That's the dis descent yeah. into madness. Yeah. And the you're supposed to make it you got to make it three you're supposed to make it three minutes like if you make it three minutes like good way to go <laughs> that's amazing. the win is just getting to stay on the stage in that crazy three minutes. it's like yeah. a bull rider yes it's crazy then they're like and if you make it past three minutes get off stage at five oh, okay so yeah. there's a threshold yeah yeah oh crazy yeah right out of the gate I know this is not gonna go well. Yeah, <laughs> it's not my target demographic at all. Okay, yeah. I mean, lights were on as you took the stage, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but they they should have been. Yeah, 
uh, it's not my target de- demographic. And then it just wasn't my target it's not demographic. demographic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so the so the I, I'm working really hard on my set. Like yeah. like I'm I'm moved things around, which I know probably if you're not a comic, it doesn't sound like a big deal. But so in that moment, when you walk in, you realize not my demographic. Yeah. The vibe feels all weird. Yeah. This whole different format. Are you panicking? Are you like, or is there a sense of like resolve of just like, I'm going to freaking dominate this thing or what, I, what, how does, how do you affect, how does that affect you? I've never done well when I'm like, I'm going to kill. Yeah. Never have I killed. Yeah. Always not kill. <laughs> <laughs> where i have found wins is when i said okay i'm just going to i'm just going to work as hard as i can on this to think this through yeah and give it my very best shot yeah so for me that looks like okay look at my set list look at the people do i think these jokes are going to connect with them mm-hmm. what is a killer joke i can do right out of the gate mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that sort of thing yeah. so i thought I, if if I just do that, mm-hmm. hopefully that'll work. Yeah. So the first girl gets up, and honestly, she doesn't do very well, and they don't boo her. Mm. And the host gets back on stage and says, "What are you guys doing? Are you going to do that? You let her off. Yeah. Are you gonna do this or not? Yeah. And so like gave." permission yeah and dude the second guy got up there he lasted three seconds <laughs> i mean they were like i was like dude i'm sorry that that was unfortunate yeah. like because it wasn't just that like oh yeah was, so what happened like he just he started talking he meeting. started he actually had a good he's my friend and it just was unfortunate but he had a guitar he did a guitar comic and he plugged in his guitar and it didn't he was it didn't go the first oh, no. time like yeah. he strummed in it's a technical hear. difficulty it was technical difficulty and then it was just like keys <laughs> i was like give him a chance good lord <laughs> yeah so he was off stage so fast and then oh, the third God. person was off stage so fast and then the fourth person was off stage so fast and then it's me i'm number 5 yeah so i go up to the girl in the back of the room who is running the timer light Okay. And I say, are you running the light? That Just for clarity, you, someone in the back of the room is always running a light to give you like a minute. So like if you're doing a five minute set, you'll look and you'll see somebody will shine their phone at you at four minutes. Yeah. You need to know where that person is or you're going to go too long. Yeah. 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 So I'm like, are you running the light? And she goes, yeah. And uh, I said, okay, are you giving it to me at three minutes? And she goes, if you make it. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I know. If I make it, yeah. <laughs> so I go up to the side of the stage, and the guy goes, "Next up, this comic's from Tulsa. Make some noise for Adam Bush." And I take the stage, and I said, first thing about me, I'm a cancer survivor, and I'm celebrating 37 years of being cancer free." Mm-hmm. And it was just like applause, woo! And then I go. You guys are probably looking at my hair and like, I didn't know this lesbian was 37 years old. And they lost it. <laughs> Just so much laughter. Yeah. And I kept going and I kept going and I got the three minute light. Yeah. And then I kept going and kept going and I got the five minute light. And I ended on this joke that Gary wrote <laughs> that is a great closer. Yeah. And when I was finished, I was like, I'm Adam Bush. And I got off stage. And I didn't get booed off stage. Yes. I did get booed <laughs> off stage. And uh, the guy comes up to say, I didn't even take the stand, the mic off the stand. Because I was like, I don't have two seconds yeah, right. to yeah. waste. <laughs> yeah. So he, the guy gets up there. He goes, so professional. He's like, give it up for Adam. I'm walking off the stage. And the club booker yeah. is standing there. And like an old movie, yeah. he just looks at me <laughs> and motions for me to come back to his <laughs> office. And I just follow him back there, and he and he goes, "How about the first week of July?" Yeah, and I was like, "I could do it." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, yeah." That's. I thought he was gonna be slow clapping. Yeah, no. I, <laughs> he and he goes, he goes, because uh, you could win the contest. There wasn't a monetary prize, but he goes, "You're." He goes, "Great set. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna win this contest." Yeah, yeah. And I was just like. You think I care about winning the contest? <laughs> I wanted to get booked. I won the contest. You won. 
Yeah. That's yeah. Funny. So I'm telling this story for a couple of reasons. One, it's a fun story. Yeah. Two, I'm telling the story for a couple of reasons. Number one, Gary's wife, Ginger, said that I always tell stories about how I bombed. Oh, and she's yeah. like, surely Adam is doing good. <laughs> He's doing this. So. Everybody's very concerned about your career. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, all he ever talks about is bombing. I don't <laughs> no, know. Those are What's, the more interesting yeah, stories. Sounds like an uphill battle. <laughs> <laughs> the second reason but I tell is you is because it is sometimes in, especially in like the entertainment industry, or at least with being a comic, my experience has been that sometimes you really do have to think outside of the box and put yourself out there yeah. in a kind of an unconventional way. Mm -hmm. And I realize it's a lot of doing, like pay to be in this contest, drive four hours, you know, make, like I asked Diana weeks in advance, just like, I'm going to do this show in, in Arkansas. And like to think like, I'm going to get, I just want to get in front of that booker. Mm -hmm. I realize those things are unconventional, but sometimes like if you just kind of bet on yourself, mm -hmm. It doesn't always work out. Right. I have a yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred stories that haven't worked out like that, but when they do, it's really nice. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah. That's so. awesome. We got a great podcast. Chris and I, as, uh, several weeks ago, we did an episode uh, called Adam and Chris are doing a show where we were talking about a showcase that we were that I'm putting on. It's a monthly showcase I put on and Chris was going to be on it. We talked about how we were prepping for it yep, yep. And, now, and we've done it. We did it. We did it. And now we're going to, and uh, we're going to talk about how it went. How it went and where we're moving forward from there. And this is great because Gary was there. I made That's it right. Gary show. came out to the show. Yeah. So we're just going to talk about it. All right. Okay. Here we go. So we, uh, uh, very, very short to catch you up. We, we were, we did a, we did a showcase. I do a monthly showcase in Tulsa, Oklahoma at Welltown Brewing which is a very cool brewery. And we did the first one in April. And I'm sorry, we did the first one in March. We're doing the second one in April. And uh, want to talk about how it went. Yeah. So you, it's all clean. We had seven comics. I hosted yeah. and did a set. You did five or 10 minutes. Yeah. So let's like just that. start off with talking about how your experience was. <laughs> yeah, talk about from the start of seeing... The people that go before you, how does that does that affect your set? Are you thinking mm. like, oh, yeah, you had like three people were, go go they were before really you, good, or the audience? It's is. probably more the audience that I think about less than the the other comedians. Um, but I, it, it was for me, it was one of those experiences, and I'm so glad I did it. But it is feeling very out of my element, out of. You do a lot of churches, a lot right. of corporate events. Yeah. And so being in just kind of like a restaurant kind of bar scenario, yeah, it's honestly just intimidating for me Like, yeah. I because I just feel like I don't really understand this vibe yeah, or what... You said to me, like, it's a very cool vibe. Yeah. And you don't feel very and cool. And I don't feel very cool. I feel like, why is dad at... Why is dad coming to our cool dinner? <laughs> we're event? all there. We're all dads. I know, but it just feels, I just feel out of place. <laughs> None of your kids were there. I know. Or go there. <laughs> well, and that's why I say it was really good for me because I think it, it really just brought to the surface a lot of insecurities that I need to like get over and get past. Sure. And like, why am I so afraid of this? Or why am I so timid? Chris, you belong there. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, you belong everywhere. <laughs> um, but no, but that, like that was my honest feeling was just like, oh, I what I think is funny, these people probably don't think is very funny. Oh, you were thinking, okay. Like talking about, I don't know, just even things with raising my kids or whatever. Some of my jokes are about that. And it's just like, I don't think anybody in here wants yeah. to hear about like kids or okay. any of that stuff. Okay, so you think everyone there doesn't have kids. That's why they're here. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's what it feels like. It feels yeah. like... These people are all having a great time, and and um, family isn't very important, or you know, which is not true. It's just like <laughs> most people. Know. Most people have a family. I guess that's true. Yeah, uh, and yeah, I don't say that like looking down. I just mean like it's just a different vibe. I don't yeah. know, and I'm not that familiar with it, yeah. so it's hard for me and, to connect. And, and in addition to that, it was amazing for me because I brought my comic friends to it. And then, like, it is a little bit of a separated world for me. Oh, sure. You yeah. guys. Yeah. And then my comic friend. Yeah, yeah. Don't really yeah. run in the same. And suddenly it was together. Yeah, yeah. And I saw you talking to people that I see at, like, 
the starlight open mic on on a wednesday night at yeah midnight yeah i was like whoa <laughs> what's happening it was like that episode of seinfeld like yeah they all where, bizarro yeah you're no no not bizarro the one where um george's fiance starts hanging out with elaine yeah yeah and uh you're killing independent george like that one you're killing independent adam <laughs> and i enjoyed i enjoyed meeting the other comics and that was that was super cool um, but I would imagine they would probably feel uncomfortable if they were performing at a church. Yeah. Oh, yeah. M- maybe not all of them. Not all of them, but I just mean... Most of, them, most of them probably would, yeah. It might feel like, oh, I don't understand the dynamic here. I guess that's what I felt like. Yeah. But so what that created in me was, I think, a real lack of confidence taking the stage. And I think that totally showed up in my performance, which is like really made me angry after the fact of just like, I, I, I don't know angry maybe isn't the right word, but just like going, Oh my gosh, I, I, I don't know. just kind of yeah. gave me a, a, a drive to go. Like I'm so sick of showing up to these places that like this and then kind of giving a half hearted effort yeah. because I'm afraid to like really sure. put myself out there. Yeah. And so that was really, Honestly, I'm really excited to do it again because yep. I want to just have a different, completely different attitude showing up with a little bit more confidence and, and, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I thought, I thought my set was, I didn't think I performed particularly well and I was definitely in my own head and yeah. I was very nervous and right. I was kind of, there were several jokes that I was planning on doing that I just didn't do and, yep. you know, it was all that stuff. Yeah. So I, I didn't think I particularly did very well, but I want to try it again with a little bit more confidence. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But Chris, you're saying what you thought would have been a 10. Where, where did you land? Oh, as far as like my performance or like how well... Hi. Yeah. That's back if, on the lap. If everything would have went how you planned it, that being a 10, where did you land um, on your actual <laughs> performance? Maybe like a four, okay, or a three, probably. Wow! I again, it that goes high, back. Huh? It, it goes. Back, <laughs> well done. It goes back to me. It goes back to me of how, if I gave my, if I like really felt like I performed really well and people just weren't connecting, like I feel like I can live with that. It's like okay, not my scene, and I get it. Uh, but I just, I felt like I got up there and didn't make eye contact with any, like I didn't like own the stage. I just kind of got up there and was like, "Eh," and mumbled out my jokes. And then, and so in that way, I just feel like I didn't learn anything. I, I mean, I didn't learn anything like as far as anything about my material, I learned another lesson of like, you better have some confidence Stepping Which on is the a stage. big deal. It's a huge deal. It's a huge deal. Huge deal. Yeah. Uh, Comics need confidence. You gotta have stage. confidence. You're not you're dooming yourself. Oh yeah. If if you're just gonna get up there and do what I did. So yep. I'm I'm I might be over being overly negative. Um but that's what it felt like to me. Was I just like I because I never felt like in control or felt like I was like Yeah. <laughs> I yeah like I was in Wichita on Wednesday at yeah. like a showcase and I just felt felt like it didn't go great. Mm. I was in Wichita. It's three hours away. I the moment I could I got out of there and I messaged an open mic here in Tulsa. I was like, can I get on stage last? I'm driving in from Wichita and I was the last. I pulled up just as like it was ending and they let me on stage. What like midnight? Yeah, and I was just like, I did it. I was like, okay, at least that was somewhat redeeming. <laughs> because I just I couldn't same set no 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 totally different, different set, set at different Wichita set. and Tulsa yeah so Adam tell us about yeah the night from your perspective so you know I put it together yeah and and we if we go back uh the month before I started it as an open mic and it went abysmally bad mm-hmm. um with uh, uh it just it was not good at the same venue same venue yeah yeah that story, if you go back to one of the podcasts, the story that I tell about like, I'm doing a clean mm-hmm. open mic and then oh, this guy man. gets up there and just starts saying the F word over and over yeah, and over and over. Yeah, didn't get invited back. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I can't do this. Mm-hmm. And so I started a clean comedy showcase and uh, one, I was like, 
we had seven great comics and I was seeing the room fill up and I was really excited. And then I realized that I made two pretty big mistakes. Mm. So, so I'm just looking at it as the, the, the showrunner or the producer. Yeah. Or right. Two mistakes. Number one, I let the comics when everybody, when all the comics came in, I let them sit really close yeah. to the stage. And so everybody sat towards the back. Yeah. That was a stupid rookie move. I knew better than that. The second thing. So the audience was. The audience was, was very far. Was disconnected. Yeah. From I didn't stage. move any of the chairs. And we actually had a camera guy there. And he was in the. Like he was basically creating this like wall, wall between us and the the audience, which was just a stupid idea. Why I, Why did you I do that? Gotta get those clips, you know? Gotta get those clips. They did look good. But, yeah. <laughs> but the second thing, the second mistake I made is I didn't have a place. I didn't work with the the brewery to have a place for people who were just there mm -hmm. to go away. Like, and this is a really big brewery. So like there were specifically two or three tables that were just there, not for comedy and they were very loud. Mm -hmm. And when people get beer in them, they don't, they're not quiet. Mm -hmm. And they were so loud mm -hmm. the whole show mm -hmm. that like, it was nearly impossible to pay attention and I thought I did not set everybody up to succeed. I didn't think this through. And so uh, while I was very happy with the show and even the people who came to see us, and it'll grow. There'll be more people. This will become something that people are like, oh, yeah, once a month we can go to this thing. I uh, was disheartened by that event, mm. even though it was better than when I did the open mic. I mean, it, you know, incrementally it was way, I mean, it was way better. Mm -hmm. So the next day I, I reached out to the venue and I just said, Hey, would you guys, cause we were upstairs. Mm -hmm. Would you guys open up downstairs so that I can tell people, Hey, if you're not here for comedy, we just ask you to be respectful and quiet. If you don't want to hear it, the up downstairs is open. And they're like, we'd love to, mm -hmm. because they didn't really know how to handle it either. Yeah. Right. They, they had never had a comedy show. And my goal is there is a, 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 brewery show in richmond that i've been to mm. they've been doing it for years mm. it's once a month and they they are known for like this is a fun show to go to mm. every month and i can i can come to it and so i want to grow like the kind of the brand of this show yeah yeah, yeah. that's cool so i can get back to the community and then uh on the next one i'm gonna reserve the tables in the back so that people have to sit, sit up front, front as they're yeah. filling up yeah so yeah so but I thought the comics did great. I bailed on my set super early because I was like, we got to get out of here. I can't even hear myself. Mm -hmm. And that's what I thought. I didn't know. I, I, I wondered if you bailed on your set. Super fast. I, I, thought you'd, I was like, oh, I thought you were going to do more jokes. Yeah. I did like five minutes and I yeah. was just like, let's be done. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but I'll tell you the details about the next one that we're doing after Gary gives his perspective. Because you so attended. On a scale of, of one to ten, how did you rate your act oh uh, mine was like a one like my set was like a one um as far as being like just learning how to be a show producer i was you know like like a three or a four mm -hmm. it's not i did a great job of getting the comics i felt like you guys were informed knew what mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah all the professional stuff the club the club made a ton of money the, the mm. brewery made a ton of money mm. yes yeah, so they sell food and beer and they were very happy mm -hmm. so let's just say nailing like locking in a venue for this yeah 10 yeah get it <laughs> yeah they're like you can keep doing this yeah yeah which is great that's awesome yeah yeah their drinks were great were they yeah yeah i didn't they're they this is funny they uh they're so kind we do it we do it for free um but they but they messaged me the day of and they were like hey we talked and all the comics get free chicken sandwich which they have amazing chicken. delicious it's fantastic and so i i texted all the comics which is like hey free chicken sandwich which is a big deal you yeah. get to i mean you don't have to pay for food free chicken sandwich to everybody and one of the girls shana blake she just goes that's why i do it <laughs> <laughs> is she the one that was talking about trying to get better just yes. being better yeah shana blake she had the best set of them. Yeah, she was amazing. Yeah, she was, she, yeah. She was amazing. I invited her back for the next one. She was honestly the only one that got laughs louder than the audience was. Loud. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, I would uh, at my next special or whatever. I'm gonna ask Sean if she'll open. She was. Yeah, she's so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and she's not a clean comic, but she had a great five minute clean set. Yeah. So yeah, 
Yeah, yeah she, she was, was great. great. I love my favorite joke that she does is she's like not looking for like a hot boy. Yeah. She was just like, I'm not looking for like, what did she say? She's I'm, like, I'm not looking for a firefighter. I'm looking for a, a volunteer firefighter. <laughs> 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 I'm not looking for a police officer. I'm looking for like a security guard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking for somebody who's like, do you need help? Because I could call someone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So funny. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Gare, your perspective. Um, I had a great time. Oh, yeah. Andrew had a great time. It's great. Good. We invited some friends, Jason and Taylor. Yeah. To meet us up there. And so we had a great time. That's great. Um. Yeah, I didn't. I like. I don't go in thinking, "How does this venue feel mm-hmm. for? How's the audience?" Like, I didn't even. I thought, "Oh, these people that are sitting way back in the corner, they must. They're not here for the. They're just here for the nugs, right?" And that's what they like, serve is nug. They yeah, call nugs. It's called chicken nuggets. nuggets. Oh, chicken nuggets. Yeah, I just for the podcast. You know, um, nugs is not a common word. <laughs> yeah, so I wouldn't want to sit closer yeah myself right mm. but um i I just i thought it was great that's great. i had a good time mm. and hey that's what i want i want people to have yeah. a great time it's great yeah. i mean this has gotten my whole thing about comedy i want people to have a great time i want to give people a great time you yeah. know and like after you know chris who said gave himself or it rated the experience a three that's what he said three so i go oh, okay you're just way you're way off yeah <laughs> Like every time you say you have a terrible experience, it's not oh. three. I go, that was probably a six. Mm. That's great. It's, look, look at that. Yeah, and Gary's really pessimistic. That's true. And I'm a hard, a tough critic. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just go. Yeah, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it yeah. could have been better, but I, I didn't feel anything like you felt. And I talked to Andrew Welch after, and he said that's one of the that, comics. Yeah, he was another comic there, and he was like, "Yeah, it was a weird room." And I was like, yeah, maybe, but I'm not thinking about that. Well, that's good to know. Um, if I was literally just showed up for like a show. Yeah. I might. Yeah. But we were there with friends. Yeah. As well. And there's like food and drink. Yeah. So it's like. Having fun. Oh, this is fun. Yeah. This is a fun night. That's great. Yeah. And it was free. I mean. <laughs> like, and it was free. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I got what I got what I paid for. Yeah. <laughs> A three from Chris. <laughs> um, yeah, so I would I'd probably plan on going going back. That's great. Well, guess what? Next one. We got a, what a great segue. We got another one. April twenty seventh, Welltown Brewing, Ooh. seven o'clock. Uh, we've got uh, our second clean comedy showcase. It's going to be great. Chris and I are on it. Yep, we're doing it. And then we've got some uh, comics that I think are very funny. Peter Bedgood. Peter good Bedgood. Pal. So Peter good. What? So yeah. good. Peter Bedgood, who is a, a local celebrity. You know, I've actually never heard Peter's stand-up. Peter might be my favorite comic in Tulsa. He's so funny. He's he in Tulsa? What did you I, say? He's back in Tulsa? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've done... Actually, I don't know that I was in anything with him. I think about it. I've, I've been... I, obviously, I've seen him act and yeah. do stuff like that, and I we are paths have crossed a little bit with that stuff, but not not stand up. So I'm yeah. I'm so excited for that. I've only ever seen him. There was this was 15 years ago. He hosted a an ad, a marketing advertising award show mm. oh. at the Tulsa Aquarium. So he was dressed as a shark. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. I he hosted the show. <laughs> I Do you remember this, yeah. Chris? Were you so, this? I don't think I was there, but yeah, I feel and like, then I, like I heard about it. Remember him being in an ATN at like a national ATN yeah, 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 exactly. I know national that guy. Ad. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm glad you had fun. Yeah. So the next one, uh, uh, April 27th, Welltown Brewing, seven o'clock. It is free. Seven comics again, and we've got uh, me and Chris, Peter Bedgood. A uh, girl, Lacey Rains, who was at our last show. Mm-hmm. She opened the show. Yeah, I thought she really was very did. funny. Yeah. Are there any magicians? Oh, there are no mu- magicians, but my friend Sam Price, who is very funny, and he's from Arkansas. Okay. He is going to be there. And then a comedian friend of mine, Julie Drake, who's very funny, uh, from Oklahoma City. And Julie is uh, has opened for Brian Regan. Oh. Yeah. Cool. So we got a couple of out-of-towners coming for the... Well, oh my gosh. Awesome. It's awesome. 
One tip for all of the patrons. The patrons? The patrons of the comedy show of Advocate yep. or just to go. One thing I didn't know is that you guys passed around a tip jar. Okay. And who has cash? Mm. Not me. So I would have like thrown some cash in had I had any. Yeah. But I wasn't prepared. Thank for you. Show. Thank so you for telling anybody, me that. Anybody that's coming. Bring a little cash. Bring we, some cash. We do it coins. free. We do it for free, but we do pass around a tip jar, and I just distribute it amongst the comics. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they get a little I mean, gas. I threw money. a couple nugs in, so I hope you guys got those. <laughs> yeah, they were delicious. Delicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks for listening to the podcast. If you want to comment or send us a message, riskitpod at gmail.com. Uh, we welcome them and we'll read them on the air. Hey, if you li- if you watch this on my YouTube page, we are moving Risk It for the Biscuit podcast over to its own page so you can uh, navigate over there to um, Risk It for the Biscuits podcast page on YouTube stays in the same place, Spotify and Apple podcast. It'll stay there. If you want to follow me online at Hey Adam Bush, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. And my pal Chris is on those places as well. That's right. At Chris Munch Comedy. Chris Munch Comedy. Yeah. You can also buy merch. Buy Chris. Buy merch, personalized messages from my characters. Yep. I'm about to launch a thing. I don't When is this going to actually play? Sometime in April, I think. Okay, I'll, I'll wait. I got a little something coming that yeah, I'm excited little about. A little, okay. a little way you can up your level. I love it of connection Ooh, with this much can, comedy. Didn't know about this? Ooh, I think yeah. I know you can up going. yours. Do what? You can up yours. You can up yours. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, you don't know this. I've also got merch coming out. You do? Yeah, I'll have merch out by the uh, end of April. Awesome. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. Socks. So, undergarments we're starting with um shirts and a bag you need a a wig that is permed hair it's just a little hair piece that you can just That's situate true. right here that everybody front. can look like me so how weird yeah, would that be full madam bush yeah oh hello. Madam, madam bush <laughs> and of some course, glasses some signature series glasses it's funny you're mentioning this it is a part of uh it's going to be part of my merch, so you'll see. Oh, sweet. Maybe you could help me to uh, put it Spread out there. Spread the word. Spread Absolutely. the word. Absolutely. Yeah. Our podcast is sponsored by Northern Creative, which is Gary's company. Northern.work. He does video production, including graphics and animation, and he's the best in the biz. Best <laughs> in the biz. <laughs> so if you like our stuff, um, go to Northern.work, and you can check out videos, curriculum, and uh, promos graphics all types of stuff that gary makes like there's a lot of freelancers out there okay (laughs) but what you're getting with this guy right here okay you're getting an actual partnership okay it's not just him yes i'll do the work for you yeah he's gonna he's gonna make everything that touches that work better and Mm -hmm. so you're getting a real partner every time you better every time you promote northern creative you sound like you're making fun of them (laughs) All right. How about this? I'm gonna. We'll wrap up with this. Uh, uh, Gare. That's true. Uh, which character would you like to promote your company? <laughs> Steven Stevens, <laughs> Pastor Bobby, Ricky Rhodes, or uh, MLM Chad? Chad. And then I'm gonna do a setup, and then you're gonna you're gonna promote it, and then okay. we'll be out. Oh man, that's tough. <laughs> that's a tough a tough one. I would I would say. The closest, um, my target audience would be yeah. the closest to Pastor Bobby. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Nonprofits, churches, things like that. Yep. So, so Pastor, that Bobby. Pastor Bobby. Okay. Yep. He's okay. got his first, <laughs> his first, uh, what do you call these? Uh, my brand ambassador. <laughs> Pastor that's Bobby. Uh, that's good. All right. So I'll set it up and then. And then go from there. All right. Uh, Risk It for the Biscuit Pod is sponsored by Northern Creative uh, Video Graphics Animation. Uh, check them out at northern.work so that you can get uh, your work done well. And yeah, uh, we're so going to have a little little promote. We've got a little, uh, what do you call it? A little uh, comment from longtime Northern user. Okay. First time commenter. First time commenter. Pastor Bobby. Pastor Bobby. Pastor Bobby, what do you have to say about Northern Creative? Oh, Northern Creative. Where do I begin? I mean, really, he's been, it's all by Gary Hornstein, and he has had, he's been 
what an influence he's had. The ripple effect of his effort. Um, you know what I love about Gary is you're getting you are getting not just a freelancer. Freelancers are a dime a dozen these days. What you're getting with him is an actual partner. Amen. He's going partner with you to make whatever you need him to do as good as it can possibly be. And here's the thing. He's, he's a freelancer, but he's sanctified. And that's the difference. Amen. Isn't that good? He is good. <laughs> he's good and he's good. Amen. <laughs> I don't know. Better way to end. All right. Well, we love you. Thanks for checking out the podcast. Uh, Goodbye. See ya. 